Okay, our next speaker. Well, I've been dreading this moment, bro. <laughs> Sheikh Kamel studied 20 years. Sheikh Abdul Salam, the founder of Majid al Sunnah, Majid, uh, Majid al Nur. I'm thinking, what's the Jafta on my right? How did he end up here, bro? <laughs> well, I've a lot of things. Can I kindly ask before we start, man, a couple of minutes, if I can ask everyone to get up, stand up, have a bit of a stretch, or maybe give salam to the brother next to you, and then inshallah we'll sit back down. Two minutes, inshallah, just a quick get up, have a bit of a stretch, a bit of a stretch. يلا يلا بسم الله بسم الله ان شاء الله بسم الله يلا بسم الله ان شاء الله come on guys if we just sit back down ان شاء الله if we just sit back down والله may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you you guys have all been patient you've all been patient والله كانوا بدوا من الله يرقدوا man Malish, if we can just be patient, inshallah, mashallah, most of you, you know, you've been here for quite some time. But at the very least, as, a, as an incentive, know that by the end of the gathering, Allah has forgiven your sins. Yani, what else do you want? What a way to start the month of Ramadan. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. I'll try to be quick, my brothers and sisters, as much as I can. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in multiple places in the Quran, multiple areas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the human being that, O oh, son of man, take shaitan as your enemy. You know, for Allah, He can say something once and that's it. We understand and it's in the Quran. If it made it to the Quran, we understand its importance. Take him as an enemy. He is a sworn enemy. Don't follow shaitan. Don't follow the whispers of shaitan. Allah goes to the extent saying, don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. Again and again, don't follow. Watch out. Take him as an enemy. So you're probably thinking, that what's shaitan got to do with the month of Ramadan? No. Almost every sheikh has mentioned that, you know, come the month of Ramadan, shaitan is chained away. The reality is, my brothers, shaitan has worked for centuries on this ummah and he has worked for centuries to destroy every goodness we have in this deen. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You know, alhamdulillah, I was quite fortunate that just a few weeks ago we were in Umrah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this possible for everyone. So we're there, we're in Umrah and imagine, you know, you're in the Holy of the Holy. The Holy of the Holy, we're sitting in front of the Kaaba. Front of the Kaaba. And, you know, like there's this moment, you know, anyone that's been there knows what I'm talking about. And he's sitting in front of this, it's just epic in every sense of the and then the Adan goes off. Imagine if the Kaaba Shaitan has not left alone. So then the Adan goes off and then I see people stand up and they're pulling out their phones and I can talk about the phone all day long. But I'm thinking, you know, it's a special moment, let it be. So they're pulling out their phones and they're standing in front of the Kaaba and then as soon as the Adan goes off, instead of looking at the Kaaba or recording the Kaaba, they turn to their sides and they start recording this clock tower building. I just think, oh my heart, man. Even the Kaaba is not enough for the hearts of the believers. This clock tower, this monstrosity of a building. And tonight I'm not here to speak about halal and haram. I'm not speaking about halal and haram, but just, just for a moment, think deep with me. If I'm standing in front of the Kaaba, if I'm one of the very few fortunate people, look, there's almost 2 billion people, almost 2 billion Muslims on earth. Very few are selected and allowed to stand in front of the Kaaba. Yet even at that moment, while the Adan is being called, Muslims have turned and they're recording this clock tower and you should see their eyes. Look, brother, look, it's glittering, it's turning green. Are you standing in front of the Kaaba? Shaitan has worked endlessly. We go to Medina. Imagine Medina, Masjid al Nabawi, the Holy of the Holy. The Holy of the Holy. You're in Medina. 
Imagine a place, imagine a place the Prophet chose to die in. You walk into Masjid the Nabawi, and look, alhamdulillah, I'm fortunate that I take, you know, young guys, youth, and, and, and you walk into the Masjid. This is the Masjid that changed the world. Masjid the Nabawi is the Masjid that changed the course of history for life. Yet we walk into the Masjid, and Shaitan has left no stone unturned. You walk into the Masjid, again, I'm not speaking about halal and haram. And wearing all of the carpet, of the pillars, of the electric domes that open and close, and ah, oh, and people pull out their phones and look, Sheikh, and, and our hearts are connected not to the Prophet, وسلم, not to the land where Jibreel descended thousands of times to bring down Quran, to speak to the Prophet, to help. No, 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 no. The hearts of the Muslims has gone where? Every time I go, someone asks me, Brother, how many pillars do you think there's in Masjid al Nabawi? <laughs> so Shaitan has left what? No stone unturned. And unfortunately, he's done the same with Ramadan. You might think, but brother, Shaitan is chained up in the month of Ramadan. Let me tell you, my brothers, Shaitan has been working 11 months. He actually needs the four weeks off. He's more than happy to take the month of Ramadan off. He's been winding you and up so long. You know, like there used to be a phase, the fidget spinner. You know the fidget spinner? The more you spun it, what happens to it? The more you spin it, then when you let it go, it runs for longer. Habib Shaitan's been spinning you and I for 11 months of the year. So come Ramadan, him and his mates, they're kicking back saying, watch this guy go, bro. Boom. And you're gone for a six. Gone for a six. And wallah, it breaks my heart. It, 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 it boggles the mind. How has Shaitan been so successful? In changing the Ramadan that the Salaf and the Prophet and the companions used to long for. To this, you know the companions. Look in Masjid al Nabawi. In Masjid al Nabawi, when Omar ibn al Khattab came into rule, came into power, Omar ibn al Khattab's time was like it's known in our history as the golden era of Islam. That's that's the peak. After the death of Omar ibn al Khattab, it was just things were never the same. So in his time, obviously Islam is growing. So now the companions came, pressure was there. It was necessary to do what? To expand the Masjid al-Nabawi. They had to do it. And, 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 and you know, Umar ibn al-Khattab was one of those very specific people. You know, he used to monitor the hearts of not only his heart, but the hearts of... Anyway, so now they've expanded the Masjid. It's a sign of growth. It's a sign of success. Imagine the Prophet's mosque. They've expanded it. Money is coming in. Now the companions, they're debating amongst each other on who has the heart, who has the courage to go to Umar ibn al-Khattab and suggest, not carpet, not chandeliers, not electric domes. No, no, no. Who is brave enough to suggest that we should put some paint on the walls? So Umar ibn al-Khattab says, over my dead body. What was his dalil? What was his thinking? What was the wisdom? He said, I fear that the color of the walls may, just may be a distraction and a fitna for the hearts of the believers. So you look at electric domes and you're in awe. Omar refused to paint the walls because he knew how sick our hearts were. How, just for the love of Allah, someone explain to me, how has shaitan turned the month of fasting into the month of feasting? Someone, please explain. The month of eating less has become the month of throwing food away. The halal and haram, I'm not here to debate. The mashayikh here, I'm not a sheikh at all. I'm not here to speak fuck. But just think with me. How has the month of fasting, how has he been so successful in turning it into the month of feasting? Is it haram to eat? No, Allah, it's not haram to eat. But brother, I ask you by Allah, is this what Ramadan is about? You want to 
to see the condition of the Muslims? Go to an iftar where the food is late. Bala Sheikh, Bala Balut, bro, where the hell is the food? Brother, Wallahi, they've ordered the food. The brother stuck in the car. Who's the Hamar that's driving, brother? Doesn't he know? Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was speaking to her nephew Urwa, that we used to see the moon, then the moon, then the moon. Two consecutive months, two consecutive months, so it's longer than Ramadan. Two consecutive months, she said there was no boiling, no cooking, not a single flame was lit in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah for two consecutive months. So Urwa asked, how did you eat? How did you survive? She said, Al-Aswadan, Al-Tamru, al ma if Omar didn't want to put paint on the walls because he, lest it should be a fitna, what would have happened to the Prophet if he seen the way we deal with breaking our fasts? Explain to me how the month of fasting has become the month of feasting. Explain. Can you see shaitan all over it or not? Where there are foods that are only made in Ramadan. And we've accepted that. There are sweets, they're only made. Yani if you went on the day of Eid, <laughs> brother, you missed the <laughs> Ramadan. <laughs> Who's behind it? Who's behind it? Yalla, keep you busy. Look, Shaitan couldn't stop me from standing in front of the Kaaba, but he could take my heart and my eyes away to look at the clock. Shaitan couldn't stop you from fasting. But uqsim billah, he's going to take every opportunity to destroy you. Let him feast, bro. Let him eat like monsters. Go to any one of these, you know, not last year, the before my wife said me buy bread. The day before Ramadan, I wasn't thinking, I thought, all right, I'm going to buy bread. I walked into the guy, I walked in, I said, brother, is there any bread? He looked at me and no, brother, what are you smoking? Bread? Ali Habibi Mahalu sesame seed. Nothing, nothing, where they polish the shop. So I thought, Wallahi, I thought, I said to him, brother, are you closed tomorrow? He said, no, I'm open. Consume. Consume. Business owners prepare. Look, the Salaf prepare for six months for Ramadan. Trust me, our Muslim business owners also do the same. But they're not preparing like them. They're like containers. Containers. Shops open in Ramadan and then they close when? Explain to me how the month of fasting has become the month of feasting. And trends, trends, it's not haram. Please don't come to me, brother. Are you saying, no, 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 it's not haram. But can you see shaitan all over it or not? So because uh, 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 breaking a fast wasn't enough, what did shaitan have to do? He brought out trends. A few years ago, we had this musibah that hit the ummah called the camel burger. Were you aware of it? Are you serious, Sheikh? Two minutes, how is that fair? The camel burger was the musibah that hit the ummah. Muslims in the thousands stood in rows. Brother, the camel burger, the camel. We became fuqaha. Brother, I heard if you eat camel, you need to make wudu before and after my parashu. It jannan the area. Camel burgers jannan the area. It's not haram. Wallah, it's not haram. But why in this month? Why was this the month that the Ummah was obsessed with camels? Then when camels became the norm, what happened to the Ummah? It became the deer. When the deer became the norm, last year it was the rabbit. The Australian wildlife has become petrified of the month of Ramadan because no one knows who's on the menu next. No one, no one knows who's up next. Yalla, petrified. If it's not camels and burgers and donkeys and whatever we're eating, what it's cocktails on my bar. Again, wallahi, it's halal, it's not haram. But I ask you by Allah, is this Ramadan, bro? Is this Ramadan? And shaitan has fooled. And people love it, brother. Don't you like the nightlife? Don't you like the buzz? You know, my brothers, the nights of Ramadan are holier than its days. Did you know that? The nights of Ramadan are more special, they're deeper. The best 10 nights of the year are in when? But the best 10 days of the, of, of, of the year are not in Ramadan. Indicating that the nights of Ramadan are far more special. So what has shaitan done? What has he done? You know, 
Have you seen, have you seen in our communities what has Ramadan become now? It's become this nightlife. It's become this, Wallahi, Lekemba, Lekemba has become the new King's Cross. Not King's Cross in the sense of the prostitution, no, 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 no. What do I mean by the new King's Cross? It's the place to, you know, in the 90s, in the 80s, in the, but if you, where, where do you go to party? You go to King's Cross. No, no, now we've got the new King's Cross and it's called Lakemba. Halden Street, Lakemba, Allahu Akbar. It's the buzz. It's the place to be. Is it haram to be there? Wallah, it's not haram. But I'm asking you, is that what Allah wants? We're complaining that the brother is leaning 20 rakat, brother, is this sunnah? How come that takes so long? But you're standing for 45 minutes to eat a donkey in a burger. That's not a problem. It's not a problem. So the nightlife. And brother, you know, even the non-Muslims are in. Do you think the non-Muslims are coming because, wallah, they're learning about Allah? And we're fooled. And we're? And we're fooled. Ya Allah. The nightlife, the buzz. This is the Ramadan, brother. Look how shaitan, remember, oh ye, what's he been doing? Yes, I come Ramadan, Habibi, he's kicking back and he's laughing. Look at the fools. And we're not fools, my brothers. We're honorable people. Please, please see shaitan all over it. Don't take part in these places, men. Don't fall for these trends. Our women, our women who we complain, oh ye, our women have some rahma, have some rahma. Simple foods, man, simple foods. Anything, wallah, anything you can put together in an hour, hour and a half tops. Some soup, some anything. So anything, brother. Brother, I've been fasting all day, brother. Look, look, again, you know, as men, it's funny. But these women who, brother, the, so how do they spend their Ramadan? How? Sure, cooking, bro. Wallahi jnoon. Wallahi jnoon jnoon. You know, I'm not, like if you're not Arab, I don't know. Are you guys familiar with this food? It's called Wara Anib. Anyone here familiar with it? Again, I'm not, this is my personal opinion. I'm not saying this is Deen. I believe this is the food of Shaitan. Definitely, bro. Why? Why? I'll tell you this food. It's an amazing food. It tastes beautiful. Absolutely. Why? But because it's satanic, it's beautiful. So this food. How does it work? I'll tell you how it works. If you're Lebanese, you know what I'm on about. So what happens is our wives, they call six, seven of their friends to come over. Six, seven of the friends. These are the people who don't have time for Quran. We don't have time to fix our tarawih. We don't have time to fix our tajweed. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. But the Rajal of the house, brother, he needs to eat what I need, brother. So, okay, so, so now she calls seven of her friends and seven of her friends, they come over for the subhi. Have you seen the subhi? Yes, that's amazing. Yes, six of us, they all come down. They grab these vine leaves with this uh, meat and this uh, four, five hour backbiting, slandering session. So seven hours, seven hours, seven times or whatever, four, five. Times seven people that are sitting. Look at the wastage. Look at the wastage. Six, seven hours. We had a dima. We had a Then when it's done, then when it's done, depending on which family you talk to, some of them, they're more old school, they cook it. Sometimes it's cooked on low cooking. Sometimes, I know this is a bit extreme, but some up to 48 hours cooking. 48 hours of the time of the believer in Ramadan. Why? So him and some of his friends come for tour time. And wallah, mashallah, kalna wara'anim. Can you see? Can you see shaitan or not? And here's the other dilemma. Tell your wife this year there's no cooking Ramadan. Wallahi, but foot the but foot the haitan. Yeah, what am I going to do? Because we don't know anything else. Like, like, what do we do? And this is Ramadan for us. So brothers complain always. And inshallah, he said two minutes, 15 minutes ago. So forgive me, Sheikh Allah, forgive me. But I'm trying to make up for last time. They didn't give me time. <laughs> I said I was going to get him back. I'm going to wrap up with this, yeah? So brothers always tell me what? Brother, have you noticed how Eid, Eid doesn't have the feeling anymore? 
العيد doesn't have that feeling anymore. I say, Wallah, brother, where's the feeling gonna come from? Where? You and I, we've been eating and feasting and partying 30 nights of every, we've been eating out for 30 days. You've been having hello and sweets and argili and my cousins and my tata and my amma and my khala for 30 days. Yes, I come eat. What feeling are you expecting, brother? What feeling are you expecting? Come eat. What do you expect? There's no, there's no celebration for you. You've been partying for a month. You've been partying for a month. Look, honestly, what do you expect to feel? Guess who Eid is really for? The guy that hasn't had a single invitation. He's been doing his maghrib in the masjid, breaking his fast. He's here for Isha, praying his tarawih, monitoring. And he freshes himself for 30 days, 30 days, eating little, trying to push and push and push and push. Yeah, when the day of Eid comes and he hugs the brother that's been praying for 30 days next to him. And he's, you know, his eyes tear up and he's, there's that moment. And do you think Allah accepted us, brother? That's Eid for the believers. What's Eid for you and I? Wallah, Eid is the ugliest day in my calendar. Wallah, it's the worst day in my... It's noon. It's noon. I have to go to the masjid and look good. My uh, abaya has to be ironed. You know, my wife had a heart attack that I came today and I didn't iron my abaya. Right? You're on Bahdal, you're on Jirsa, you're on Allah, you're on She freaks out. So now I have to go home. You've just done, you know, you've just done the last 10 days of Atikaf. Now you got to run home. My, you know, my abaya has to be ironed and I got to look good. Okay, fine. But Muhammad, you know, you got to take your son. It's Eid. We need to teach him. Ya Allah, you be here. So now I got to drag this kid who has no idea what's going on. So now I got to come to Eid, stand like, yeah, Baba, Allah, you're like, Allah, you're like, Allah, you're like, you're not me, bro. So now I got to stand there, right? Now I got to stand there. I got to give salam to the whole masjid, which is fine and I enjoy it. But guess who's waiting for me at 8.30 in the morning? So now I got to rush to my mum's home. Now I have to rush to my mum's home. And of course the kids, they look like they've all walked out of catalogs, bro. The Louis Vuitton, the Ma'arif Ash, the Usas, the Hikayat. See, we think it's funny. We think it's funny, but look how shaitan is all over it. So now my kids have to look like they're picture perfect. Utaba, six kids and the Taraga van and three of them in seats. Allah, I want to kill myself, bro. Uhutu bil kirsi wa ya abu fawut li idak wa fawut li ishrak wa lami bakuya. Wallah al azim by the third house, by the third, like yalla an abu shaitan. Get in there. What the hell is that, bro? And that's my Eid. That's my Eid. That's my Eid. Go to house to house and let's look amazing. Let's look amazing. And you're telling me, brother, how come I don't feel anything in Eid? Allah said, how did we get here, bro? Zakla khairan. Don't waste this Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your time. Don't be fooled. You're nothing. And you little bad boy. Now the Muslims, he looks at his clothes and his watch and the car he drives. Then he judges where he fits in society. People walking around with an attitude. And no, I don't have to pray, I don't have to fast, or even worse, I've been fasting, you know, for 10 years, praying for 10 years. How come Allah doesn't give me this? Take this arrogance out of your heart. All are dead. All are dead. Nothing moves, nothing stops, nothing rises, and nothing falls, nothing harms, and nothing benefits. Allah.